Candle Water Coffee. Different order this week to keep you on your toes, let's go. The Indiegogo campaign is now sitting at 24%, which is absolutely awesome. Thank you to everyone who has supported so far. If you haven't checked out the campaign, I'd really appreciate it. How much cooler would this be with full voice acting? Links are in the description. I haven't spoken too much about the Unity situation apart from a few little random tweets, but you might know that Unity, the game engine I use, have made some really questionable changes at the moment. They've removed Unity Plus and only kept the higher price subscription model, which is about 3,100 Australian dollars a year. While I'm too far into the development cycle for We Are Not Alone, this has, like for so many others, broken my trust with Unity. So most likely I'll move back to Unreal Engine for future projects. I know there's going to be questions why not use Godot? Well, I'm just more familiar with Unreal. That's it. At the time of recording, Unity have apologized for the confusion regarding their changes and will be sharing an update in a couple of days. It completely blows my mind that they can announce radical changes that affect so many, then post another vague update that they're just gonna fix it. I'm not going to talk at length about this topic, I'm not just gonna jump on and start making videos for the sake of it. I want to see how things play out before I talk too much about it. I made a tweet the other day, or X or whatever the hell they're calling them now, that I felt my brain was telling me to take a break, and that I would do a half day. I tried to listen and do that, then a bunch of life stuff happened, which basically led me to being on the couch with a sad brain, unable to move for an entire day. I spent that entire day watching The Walking Dead. Also, the new Daryl spinoff is actually pretty cool. So here's a reminder to everyone, and not just game developers or indie game developers, Take a break when you need it. Don't let yourself get too run down. One of the biggest things people have mentioned about the demo is Riley's walk animation. They've commented she walks like she's on a mission to go punch something and that the animation just doesn't look right. And it's been on my list to fix for a while. I tried in the past to fix this by trying out different animations and it just never seemed to actually make anything better. In fact, the current demo build you can play has it with a slightly less arms wide stance, but with a very stiff back. This week I decided it was time to tackle it. I grabbed a few different animations from my good friend Mix imported and applied them to Riley's animation tree. The results, as you can see side by side here, the old walk versus the new walk, definitely a lot more natural. It will need some fine tuning, but for now it's a hell of a lot better. Much like the auditorium becoming a conference room, it made sense to reduce the ceiling height of the gym, just to make it a little bit more claustrophobic. It also helped me reduce the lighting count in that scene, so performance is also a bit better. The gym is currently just a go-between area with not much function, and was only ever put in to add to the immersion of this being a real space that people would be able to get exercise when isolated underground. I still haven't really decided if it has a proper purpose over the course of the game outside of this. Editing Andrew here with Laylee right behind me. I take that back about what I was saying about the gym not having a purpose. I just thought of a cool idea. I'm leaving that in there because, you know, it's good to see the process. One of the first puzzles in the demo is finding the code to get into the storage closet. Currently, it's just based on you finding the correct date, which unlocks the conversation option, and it plays out from there. I decided to start the basics of getting an interactive keypad system into the game, just by starting on the UI work, before realizing that while, well, yeah, it is fun and will add to the game, right now there's other stuff that needs to be worked on. Another thing I worked on this week was the new menu system and user interface. I always loved the original one you can see on the screen here, because it was in-universe, it showed characters and was generally in my eyes cool, but it's been nagging at me for so long that it just doesn't convey the right tone and also looks kind of amateurish. Given this is the first thing you see when booting up the game, I wanted to make this look better. Especially if I'm still going to be contacting publishers and investors with a demo, it's something that I should have tackled before launching the Kickstarter or Indiegogo campaigns, as potentially the menu itself made people nope out as soon as they launch the game. Who knows? But as you can see here, the new menu is very simplistic. Logo, things to click, a camera and a book. It conveys the intended tone for the game, but it's also much easier to read and know what to do to get the game going. I also continued these designs throughout all the other menus, options, but stupidly didn't set the correct UI scaling options prior to setting them up. So then I had to go through and resize everything again after that. I'd love to say lesson learned, but no, not really, because this has happened a few times when I'm designing UI. Let me know what you think of the new menu in the comments. I've created almost everything I need for the first act of the game to now be put together. 
This included the scenes, the dialogue, all the planning I need. And it was time to start getting things put together into a coherent flow so that the first act can go out for testing. And soon. I say acts not because the game will be released in parts, but because it's easier for my brain to handle cutting the game into sections that need to be completed. I've been working on all acts, but the main focus moving forward now is to get the first chunk done, then move on to the second, and then the third. A nice order that I can break apart and work on to get to completion. I started by finishing up a few quick things for the two intro sequences, that while they aren't heavily interactive, it's more about having a stinger, which is the heavily blurred hospital scene you see right here, and the introduction of Riley in her apartment. It's about 20 to 30 seconds of information about her motivations and why she entered the experiment. It also serves as a quick tutorial on interacting with the environment in the third person mode. Just breaking up those two different modes and the tutorializing of them. In this footage you'll see there's a few minor issues with lighting Riley, like she's not lit in certain parts, as well as little animation bugs. These all go into a nice little list on Pivotal Tracker and I can tackle them later. Content first, bugs last. I found that when I was making the demo, progress would slow dramatically as I attempted to fix minor bugs as I went. While this can be good, if you find a similar bug in another scene later, wouldn't it be better to just tackle both of them at the same time at a later date? Yeah. Something else that I wanted to add that has also been requested was having the other test subjects be a little more active in their environment rather than just be sitting around in the mess hall waiting for you to talk to them. This was a limitation of the environments in the demo, the hallway was literally just a corridor for joining things, whereas the new living area is a place where people would naturally hang out. I started testing this by just having the same Osiris soldier walking around an area by modifying its path to test it could easily navigate and oh crap. He gets stuck trying to get up the step. I love sunken floors in design, but didn't anticipate this issue. The player character can easily walk up, so I didn't consider the problem until now. I checked everything in the navigation mesh, the character itself, then decided to try something yeah, a little dodgy. I created a simple cube, added a slope that connects perfectly between the top and bottom portions of the floor, and hey, it works. That's what a lot of game dev work is, getting it to work. I just duplicated and placed that same cube on all the potential walking slopes and bam, all AI characters can now walk up and down as they please. It's still a little on the janky side, but if I didn't mention it, I doubt you would have ever noticed. It was then a matter of adding a path that Jeff will follow, Conditions will be added later so he doesn't always do the exact same movements and will randomize his path. Then again, the amount of time you actually spend in this area, it may not matter, but to me and my brain, it does. <laughs> Jeff follows a path around and interacts with various items such as the radio or just staring through the doorway and contemplating life. Here you can see him interact with the old, oh, dear god, that's not right. Let's just fix a few things up and okay, now Jeff isn't possessed anymore. So with a few other cool things done, I figured it was time to put the pieces together. Much like how I did with the demo, the best practice for me moving forward was to make sure that I A, have every scene, and then B, connect them all together. So that's what I did. Every door that connects to a certain area of the bunker, I added a hotspot, then added in the scene name it needed to load, also the spawn location so when you come from the bathroom you're not spawning outside the wrong door. This allows me to see in my mind more clearly how everything attaches and works together before going in and putting in all the logic for what events need to be triggered, which characters and objects need to spawn for certain events, and also when Riley should comment on something to guide the player further on their journey. Through feedback on the demo, I've decided that unless an area is locked off for story reasons, you'll no longer receive the I don't need to go there message. This hinders exploration and removes part of the player agency. If you want to go there and logically could, why can't you go there? Of course this means that she may either butt in more occasionally with ideas of where to go, or you can reference the to-do list in your inventory. But with all that done, I think it is time to wrap things up. While making this video, I thought that with my day off, this video would be a lot shorter than it's turned out to be from editing. In my mind, I really didn't get all that much done, but by recording and having all this footage, all these screenshots, everything I've done over the past week, it's really amazing to be able to see that, and it's amazing what your brain thinks compared to what's actually happened. It's really cool, I'd highly suggest making lots of recordings of whatever you do. Keep in mind that these videos are really a small portion of what gets done every week. It's more just the fun stuff that I can easily show that's also entertaining at the same time. I could show everything, but the videos would be three to four times the length, 
and take twice as long to edit, which in turn means I would get less done on the game. I hope you enjoyed this video. I've definitely got my love back for making these YouTube videos since starting this new format. If you could please check out the Indiegogo campaign and share it around with anyone that might be interested, I would really appreciate that. But until next week, stay safe.